Alrighty then, I am back. Alright. Had to take a few days break there. Stuff. Crazy stuff happened. It freaking almost snowed in Florida. Almost. Pretty much just a bunch of ice. Lost internet connection. Got out of school though, so I mean, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I'm back now. Okay. Well, what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here, in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right. Alright, so Edgeworth is maybe coming around, kind of warming up to us. He's like, eh, maybe he's... Here's my buddy. <clears throat> okay, I gotta do Judge's voice. Then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge! Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, through, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the TL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth please take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please! Please! Alright, the DL6 is in it, as witnessed by Mr. Edgeworth himself. That day, I had gone to the court to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, and then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. And that's all. Hmm. And? Well, I came out of nowhere. Okay. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! Same claim from Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Okay then, buddy. We're gonna get you innocent no matter what. That day I had gone to the court to observe one of my phones. Yes. Were you really there? Uh, what was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. One, two, only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Car and Mr. Yeah, Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. I don't know why that made a racket. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case. It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in, this, in Von Karma's evidence. I was going to leave an earthquake, an earthquake start trapping us in the elevator. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed, no one came to help. My father lost her composure again. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... 
Just then something heavy fell at my feet. What was it? A pistol. I assumed it was the bailiff Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell out from his holster. Your safe gun, <laughs> if the safety comes off just from dropping it. And you picked it up! What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, and then a scream. Hold it! The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. The gunshot, or that gunshot, and that horrible scream. The scream? It was a terrible scream I remember to this day. To this day? Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as, level, as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find out, and quick. Wait, that day I got in the court to observe one of father's trials? Wait, hang on. Okay, again, I haven't played this in a little while, so I mean... Oh, okay, that's probably not it. Uh, found... Uh... I don't think any of this is... Okay, here we go. Elevator, error, and depleted time incident, no clues, found on the scene. Okay, defense attorney trapped in the elevator, returning from a lost trial with Sun Miles. When bullet found in the heart, the murder weapon was fired twice. Trapped in the elevator, member lost due to oxygen deprivation after the Okay. Okay, I guess And bulletto. Are you sure that that was it, uh, Phoenix? Cause... A single gunshot. Are you sure about that, Edgeworth? I, I mean, Phoenix, are you sure that it was, uh... That? Uh, wait, are you sure it was this? I don't think so. I think you're kinda getting kinda crazy there, Phoenix. I'm pretty sure it's this. It says right here, Murder weapon was fired twice. That's what I say, at least. And you know what we say in these parts whenever something doesn't quite add up and we have something that tells us that they don't quite add up. It goes a little something like... Objection! Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. The plane, this plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts my network of victim data? Look at the victim data in this file. It says quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. <laughs> it might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm. I see. I see. You do have a point. Uh, 
You do have a point, Mr. Wright. Er, Mr. Wright! The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Yes, I do, actually. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. W what Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Kama, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. I'm not really doing a good judge today. <clears throat> Do you have evidence that... Uh, that the second firing of the pistol is... Man, I'm freaking yawning! What's up with this? Second firing of the pistol is related to this incident. Why, actually, yes I do. If you take a look at this photo right here, you'd see that there's a bullet wound clearly in Gregory Edgeware's heart, but then, as you can plainly see, there seems to be some sort of crack in the wall, or crack in the glass right there. And, you know, what else could make a crack like that except for a gunshot, let me ask you. Um, let's see, well, now what do we say whenever we have to prove, we have to present something? Uh, we'll see, I think it goes something like, uh... Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime, 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. The photo proves it! So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the cut. <laughs> He's just telling himself that. Boopy little boopy little boopy 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 little. I can't. I can't, I can't. Okay, let's try this. Let's just. I'll have to do. Oh, they're perfect. Okay. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot fired from a, the pistol. Yet, there's also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Oh, order, order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, your honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went through Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the, the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else! M Mr. Wright? But who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Uh-oh. I knew I should have stepped in before you or wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look what's written there. Not a single clue is found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed fired two times, the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Yet you still call it a bullet hole. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karmudge says, the second bullet was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claims. <laughs> I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Nah. How did this happen? I don't believe that second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? 
I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick! The second bullet wasn't... wasn't there. There are no con... Then all my conjectures are for nothing. No! But you said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edward declared innocent! I'm sorry. It's just... When I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought that there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now... I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick! Well, it seems we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one more thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though it was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no! He's confessing! Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce my ver- God! I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should sh I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright, I have an objection. Your Honor. I... I object! <laughs> Mr. Right on what grounds do you object, hmm? Oof. Nick! I... I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh, no! Yeah. It must exist. The second bullet. W what What did you just say? Nothing! The second bullet must exist? But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor! Hmm? I, uh... The, the second bullet, it, uh, it exists! What? But we've just heard proof that it does not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? Okay, I just had to get that one out. Okay. First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? The murderer had to find it. The murderer didn't need it. He had to find it. A of course there was a need. Th that's why he took it. Bah! What possible reason could he have had? Well... The reason the murderer took the bullet away from the scene with him is... Whoa. Hey there guys, if you liked this video and you'd like to let me know, there should be a button down there that says like. Go ahead and give that a little click for me. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, then there should be a button down there that says subscribe. Go ahead and give that a little click too if you want. Well, that's about all I got to say, so see ya.